Hi everyone. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm the head of the Transformation Center based in Westport, Connecticut. And at the center, in addition to the individual coaching and healing sessions that I do, we also offer a variety of workshops, classes, we have different trainings, um, all sorts of stuff, even sound baths in the backyard during the warmer months, which are fabulous. And you can check it out. All of our events are on our website at transformationcenterct.com. And you can sign up right there on the website and see what's there. Something different every month, basically. And, you know, everything we do at the center is really focused on helping you discover who you really are, you know, and let go of all of your limiting beliefs, transform them, and become the person that you want to be and live that life that you love. So that's what it's all about. I hope you'll check it out. You know, I started the Conscious Conversations program because I really love connecting with people. That's one of my core values and talking to them about what's important to them, you know, and how, what's their journey? Where, where did they start? What are they up to? And then you can learn what's in it for you because all of my guests have something wonderful to offer. I'm very excited that today my guest is Susan Suarez. Welcome to the show, Susan. Thanks for having me, Katie. Yeah, I'm so glad that we were able to work this out. And I'm gonna read a little bit about you for our audience so they can get to know you before we get started. Okay, great. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put up your contact info so they can see how to get in touch with you. So Susan Suarez is a nurse who used to be in a more traditional healthcare setting but through her experience with patients, she became drawn to the health and wellness industry as opposed to the medical industry. And we're going to hear more about that, how that transpired. Mm -hmm. And her interest in brain health led her to neurofeedback and specifically dynamical neurofeedback mm -hmm. with Neurooptimal. I think I said that correctly. Yeah, okay. that's correct. So she is now a neurofeedback specialist, and she founded a company called Neurotrain, where she provides rentals and sales systems to clients. She also trains practitioners to become certified and helps them to incorporate neurofeedback into their practices. This sounds really fascinating. I haven't even heard it's of It's pretty all of fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So again, welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, I'm curious about, like, how did you get interested in brain health to begin with? Like, how did all this start, you know? Yeah, I, you know, it, it, um, I, I think I was at a certain point after I'd been married and, and having children, and um, I, I, I found myself um, going to the library and taking books out on the brain a lot, just randomly, going to the library, taking books out on the brain. This was before I went to nursing school. I'd gone back to school for nursing. And, and I think a lot of what drove that is I um, had become sober about 28 years ago. Okay. At that time, it was more like, you know, 20 years ago. And um, I was always kind of fascinated. Why was it that my brain functioned differently than the average person? How come I had alcoholism and the other, another person didn't? How come I was able to um, recover from alcoholism. I mean, I'll, I'll always be an alcoholic, but recover from alcohol, alcoholism to a point where I can have a, a functional life, yeah, a happy, yeah. functional life. Um, and some people don't necessarily achieve that. Yeah. Uh, and then also other things such as my family uh, who, who has struggled with anxiety or ADHD or PTSD or insomnia, all of these different things that really were about cognitive health. And and so, so many people, I think, can relate to these. You know, there's so many different cognitive disorders one can have, and and they really affect your quality of life tremendously. And they don't only affect your quality of life, but your loved ones, a anybody who has a relationship with you, and and your cognitive health really uh, hugely impacts ultimately your quality of life and and the trajectory of your life as well. So, so this just was really, I would say, something that I thought about regularly. Yeah. And, and of course, how to, you know, help my family in that, in that area. Not that they were worse off than many others, or, you know, it wasn't even like we were dealing with such huge problems, but just how 
relevant cognitive health was yeah. and how I could, you know, help myself and my family. Um, and, it, and it led me to go back to nursing school because what does a, a it just seemed you know, I wanted to be some, some I wanted to be in that health world something mm -hmm. something related to health and what are your options and I thought well becoming a nurse that's a good idea that's definitely in the in the medical world so um, and that's what I did I went back to nursing school okay so that that's what you were called to do and I mean mm -hmm. that was like the avenue was being becoming yeah a nurse those were my first steps to, to get in personally involved and yeah, so yeah. interesting about the brain because I think that's something that we as a culture don't give enough attention to. I mean, it sounds weird because it's the most important part of our physical being, right? Yeah, it really affects everything. It affects our whole body. Um, autonomic, um, sympathetic, you know, there's, there's so many, yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. funny. I was just talking to somebody about this, this subject. It's like, no, it's like we're not really aware of it until it, it becomes, um, something in our personal arena, mm -hmm. you know, where it's affecting us often negatively, yes. where we'll actually pay uh, necessary attention to it. Yeah. yeah, so that's great. All right, so we became a nurse, mm -hmm. and so then what? So I became a nurse, and nursing school was amazing, and it was invigorating, and I, I learned so much about how how the body works, and um, always with this interest in the back of my mind of of brain health. Um, and eventually uh, got, got my RN and my BSN, and I was working in a more traditional, you know, healthcare setting. And I really was, um, I was surprised patient after patient, I just noticed there was, they were on so many medications. And thank goodness for a lot of these medications. I mean, thank, mm -hmm. thank goodness there's people who they wouldn't be alive, many people wouldn't be alive today for some of the medications they're on. But it just seemed like that was like the solution for so many things. And I had patients sometimes on over 20 medications. Wow. And I would have, part of my job was to go through those medications and see if there's side effects, if they're being effective, if, you know, uh, if they should be taking certain medications at the same time. Hmm. Uh, but it just seemed like this, is, is this what our medical healthcare world is now? You That's know, uh, it's about prescriptions yeah well do you think it's because and it is about more than that but that was right. i just that was that's, the feeling i would what have it felt like. yes yeah yes. yeah and is it because partly because there's so many different doctors who are specialists um mm. prescribing to one patient but there's no one like overseeing the whole the whole person i mean that would that would be part of what my role was with them to make sure that oh. um and i think that today there is more continuity continuity oh. in medical care i think there's a movement towards that and understanding that uh communication between the different disciplines is is really critical for people yeah. to get good quality care but that being said um when you're on so many medications and there seems to be no end in sight and many of those medications were related to cognitive issues mm -hmm. and also just seeing how much these um these disorders affected my patients and and their loved ones again yeah. you know um my so the experience i was having in my own life certainly translated to obviously what people experience in their lives as well so i just i was a little disheartened by that and I felt limited as as a nurse, as um, what I could ultimately do to help them. Yeah, yeah I felt like there were a lot of, lim personally, I felt a lot of limitations. Yeah. No, In certain ways, yeah. yeah. So were you able to take your experience um, in that arena and then transfer it to what you're doing now? How did that work? So I started to think, wow, you know, I'm getting older and... Um, I, I wanted to do something to help with my, improve my focus. And I had, um, one of my children had used neurofeedback a while back, maybe 15 years ago. And at that time, when the pediatrician suggested it to me, I thought, and it was about like emotional regulation type stuff. And at that time I thought, well, I've never heard of this. <laughs> you know, and what, why haven't I heard of this? But I'll give it a try. And it was, and it wasn't medication, which I kind of liked. And I thought, so So we did do it. He did it for about a year. And I thought it was very effective. And he's now a thriving uh, student at Purdue, mechanical engineer. He's, he's one of my favorite people. But so I thought, and I thought, how interesting that this was so effective 
I didn't have to put him on medication. And, um, and we went on our merry way and, and still hardly anybody knows about her feedback. <laughs> so I, I thought, you know, so when I decided for myself, I wanted to improve focus. And I know um, my husband wanted to do the same thing. I started to look at what's available out there. Mm -hmm. And I came upon Neuroptimal. And because I, I and I also was this just, just thinking because I'm in the medical and I did feel while I was in healthcare I, I really was becoming more and more interested in sort of the health and wellness field mm -hmm. and um, that appealed to me more and this certainly falls into that category of health and wellness so I thought wow so as I'm doing my research and I found Neuroptimal um, it just my you know. It seemed to everything sort of fell into place, and I and I got my first system, and I started using it. My husband as well, and my kids, and we couldn't believe. Very quickly, we started seeing significant results and shifts and changes. And I thought, oh, I think I think we're onto something here. Wow. So I was I was sold pretty quickly on it. <laughs> yeah, you had direct experience. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit and explain to us what is neurofeedback so neurofeedback and this is specifically what i do is dynamical neurofeedback um, there are two different types there's linear neurofeedback and this is dynamical neurofeedback uh -huh. um, dynamical neurofeedback it it uh, it reads your brain frequencies 256 times a second and it communicates it goes into a z amp which goes into software it's basically software and it's a mathematical algorithm that communicates with your central nervous system. I'm going to try to explain this in a way that is not going to be, you know, it, it, it can be a little challenging to wrap your mind around it. But um, it and it feeds back from the information it's getting from the sensors. It feeds back through music and there's breaks in the music. And that's what's communicating with your central nervous system, actually with your unconscious. And the reality is a, a lot of these cognitive disorders um, exist on the unconscious level. So pe people might find uh, they seek out talk therapy, um, which can be helpful for so many things, but you're, you're addressing the consciousness. And, and they may feel frustrated at times that, gosh, you know, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to eat. I know how I'm supposed to behave. I know how I'm supposed to react, but yet I'm not doing it and that's because a, a lot of these issues remain on the unconscious level which it can be is, is very hard to access yes. and that's exactly what this is accessing it. it's accessing your unconscious okay. where a, a it is really at the root of these issues which that oh, yeah. yeah as a, as opposed to so if you take a medication for you know for adhd or anxiety you're you're really addressing the symptoms because um, and again I'm not saying there's not a place in, for that um, but it's it's addressing the symptoms and once the medication is out of your system the symptoms are back so it's not um, a long term well it can be a long term solution but you you have to keep taking the medication right so it's uh, only a long term solution as long as you're taking it it doesn't yeah. it doesn't change the the brain chemistry for um, right permanently or long term exactly and this is a brain training is what it is okay. um, it's is it re rewiring so what okay. it is doing is it is communicating with your central nervous system so that your own central nervous system is essentially rewiring your yeah. own central nervous system is making the shifts and changes and that's what's very special about this as opposed to a more traditional linear neurofeedback um, where you might be trying to manipulate or move the brain in a certain um, direction increasing a frequency or minimizing a frequency this is doing the whole brain at the same time and it is, it is, it is responding in real time to whatever is currently going on with your brain. So, and and it's giving your your central nervous system information about what's happening, so that it can make shifts and changes towards comfort and away from discomfort. Oh and what this does is it leads you to being more flexible, more resilient more uh, responsive and less reactive, mm -hmm. less rigid. Uh, and, and so, yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. incredible because it's, well, I mean, my belief is that the body knows 
its optimal state. Mm -hmm. Because that's kind of how we came in. In most mm -hmm. cases, there are always exceptions, you know, birth, yeah. uh, at birth. But normally, we we have what we need inside of us. So this is just like pointing it or giving it that opportunity to. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. Our central nervous systems are really built to move towards comfort. Mm -hmm. This just sort of signals to it. Okay. You know, hey, there's a there's a, a shift, there's a change. Um, it's it's measuring frequencies and durations, and um, and it's giving it just a little more information to help it make those. So it, you, it's been compared to me. Uh, if let's say you're driving a car and you hit those ridges on the side of the road, so you hit the ridge, and if you didn't mean to, what would you do? Yeah. You'd, you'd go automatically you'd, you'd go shift back. to go back. So <laughs> it's it's along those lines. But if you I wanted see. to get off the road to change a tire, then you would continue on. But you would make that judgment call. So your central nervous system would okay. make that call. Okay. Like, no, I want to make this is a good shift or we I, that's not a good shift. Okay, that's that's really good mm -hmm. to know because it's not like it overrides everything. No, it's just not like... at all. Uh, not at all. Uh, and that's why there's no side effects which is really, uh, it's, it's, it's perfectly safe, and it's perfectly safe for anybody, any age. Mm -hmm. People will even use it on their dogs or their horses for horse training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, so, so it's, a, it's a machine that's doing this? Can it's a software. A oh, software. Yeah, so it comes in a, in a tablet, a computer tablet, okay. and there's, some, um, there's a Z-amp that's attached to the tablet a z amp? a z amp it's a little box okay. and that's sort of where the mathematical algorithms are happening and, okay. it's, and it's 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 receiving from the sensors on your head it's receiving the information of the frequencies and the activity the brain activity that's happening goes in and then the the software uh is is in the tablet and uh -huh. the music comes out and there's breaks in the music and the breaks in the music is the communication part the breaks in the music okay yeah. so you're sitting there with headphones on listening mm -hmm. type. you can listen to it straight out of the tablet or with earbuds mm -hmm. okay and so how long is a typical session the sessions are 33 minutes mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and how many do you need to affect change or, or so um oftentimes after just a few sessions i mean even after one session many times people will say oh my goodness i i i could i could feel something but for a permanent shift usually more like 20 to 30 sessions um but we all have different central nervous systems and we all respond differently and there's many other things to consider there's hormones and different things that affect our um how we're feeling and our well-being mm -hmm. but that's about that's about right so it's and it's the they also liken it to um learning how to ride a bike so once your brain learns how to ride a bike it doesn't really forget it mm -hmm. i mean you might get rusty you might have to get a refresh on how to ride a bike but for the most part your brain will remember how to do it all right so do you go in with um like a goal uh, like i want to do this or that or i want to not do this or that or how, how does that work like mm -hmm. who, and who decides this like do you you know tell me how that works mm -hmm. <laughs> like do you have a diagnosis what, what is i mean the, re the reality is that um most people would start this because of some kind of discomfort they're you know they're experiencing and for example they might be experiencing insomnia or anxiety or is there some reason why they want to start doing this um some people do it just for brain optimization they want to improve their golf game you know, because that's really what this is about, brain oh, brain right. optimization, okay. right? I'd be interested in this. Yeah, so uh, that's also, that could be a motivation. <laughs> but the reality is, because this is not giving you, um, you're not honing on in on a certain section of the brain, and you are doing the whole brain, you kind of, when you start doing this, you're, you're kind of in for a journey. You don't necessarily where, know where it's going to lead you. Eventually, those things that you are specifically concerned about will probably resolve yeah. but it's really key and it's 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 highly suggested that you journal while doing these sessions okay. because um oftentimes oh, pretty much all the time people will start to notice other things that shift and change such as even things that um are not about our consciousness like um 
oh, reflux, all of a sudden my reflux went away. Or I had those really pus painful muscle spasms uh, that went away, I don't have to take that medication anymore. Um, all of a sudden, I know I have a client who is doing it with their a family member and who had paranoid thinking and the paranoid thinking went away and there was a logical train of thought or they suffered tremendously from anxiety and mm. it, it, multiple people described the effect on anxiety the same exact way and they didn't know each other like i i got in i got in my car and it was like a ball that i always had in the pit of my stomach that just melted away or what one of the first things people will often notice is uh, a change in their relationships because certain things that um, may have really irritated them or annoyed them, affected them before, just didn't all of a sudden bother them anymore. Or they were able to replace that resentment with more compassion and, um, and understanding, which is huge. I mean, yeah. to, it, it really, it, it, people's relationships change. Yeah, no, I can see how that would, how that would work, mm -hmm. definitely. So what if someone is, um, has anxiety and they're taking medication for anxiety mm -hmm. and they start do, doing this training, um, how do they know whether, like if their anxiety is, is lessening, like how does that fit in with the medication? So do they, they stop taking it or do they have to stop mm -hmm. taking it before they start this treatment or how does that work? That's something um, I can't really counsel my clients on. I'm not, um, I'm not able to directly counsel them, but they should definitely be in contact with their doctor about what they're doing. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to start this dynamical neurofeedback tra treatment, and they they should discuss with their doctor whether they want to start cutting back to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it might just help make your medication more effective. Or you might wind up going off it altogether, which is very common. Mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, I know multiple people had st suffered with migraines and, um, you know, eventually didn't have to take the medication for that anymore. The migraines disappeared. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's something you would want to work in conjunction with your medical doctor. Mm -hmm. So just see how it goes. Like you just, you just maybe like you said, cut back or, mm -hmm. you know. What, I would, yeah, what chances are you would start off by cutting back and not just going off altogether. Yeah, but. just to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, that's really interesting. So, I mean, <clears throat> just like everything else, I want to try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, every time I talk to somebody about what they do, it sounds so um, helpful in so many ways, even though I don't feel like I have any specific thing I'd like to change or improve. Mm -hmm. But if I just did it, things would come up, right? Like it would just somehow. Yeah, I mean, you don't, what's interesting is you don't have to have a disorder to benefit from it. Yes. Um, it's sort of like yoga, uh -huh. you know, we do yoga and we're, we're all gonna feel better if we are if we are consistently doing Pilates or yoga. And it builds on itself. Or meditation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it builds on itself. It's a, it's a brain training, so it really builds on itself um, as you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And there's benefits, you know, you could decide, okay, 20, 30 sessions and I'm where I want to be, but you, then there's continued benefits of just continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. like overall. periodically, like, mm -hmm. just like every once a month or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, because for me, it's, it's about, um, yeah, optimal health and preventative. Yeah. We're all preventative aging. Preventative health, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I mean, health in a preventative way to keep you healthy, I yeah. guess is what I'm saying. So I don't have any medications, but I feel like I spend a lot of time on my health, you know, mm -hmm. just taking care of myself. So this could be an example of that as well. Yeah. And I think also with um, the world of social media and uh, all of the screen time, a lot of us may mm -hmm. spend more screen time, uh, have more time on the screens than we want to. This... I think sometimes we all have a certain form of ADHD because of that, you know, that, you know, attention issues just because our culture has changed so much. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, when you said um, focus that you and your husband were working on that, mm -hmm. you know, keeping that as we age, it's... Um... I, I have a client in retirement who her goal for doing um, sessions was she wanted to be able to read a book. I mean, she was a highly educated person, highly accomplished and all of this, but she was finding, I haven't been able to sit and read a book in years. 
So she wanted to be able to sit and read a book again. And, and she was able to accomplish that. She's, you know, reading again the way she used to when she was younger. So something as simple as that, but it really can affect for her, you know, your that's, quality of life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's helped you personally as well. Yes, it's definitely helped me with focus. And, and another interesting thing that will happen is it takes a lot of energy to maintain um, some of these negative co cognitive disorders. And when we're relieved of that, it releases um, a lot of energy. Oh, wow. So what happens is uh, in, in an organic way, um, you become more creative whether it's to pick up that paintbrush you haven't picked up in a long time or in the kitchen you want to be more creative or even i have a client who she said i am coming up with the most creative solutions at work and i'm so much more confident yeah. when we're in meetings to just speak up and she said i just feel so productive and i'm not as jet lagged as i used to be when i'm traveling like all of these things that i never even would have thought yeah. thought of and um yeah. Yeah. All these side benefits that. Yeah. That you don't start doing sessions for jet lag usually. Right. But she's noticing she's just, and that's really about um, your brain becomes so much more resilient and flexible. That's really mm -hmm. what that's a result mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, all these additional benefits that's so that cool. people experience. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm really, really <laughs> interested now. This is fabulous. Thank you for. for sharing all this information it's sure not anything that i was aware of and it's it but it, it falls right into what i what i love it's like just finding things that can help you be the best that you can possibly be mm -hmm. and tune in to um what's important to you you know and if you have right. all these distraction and, and all these um you know not um, not only disorders but things weighing on your brain then it's hard to be who you really are keeping you from making you achieving your personal goals yeah and, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the unconscious mind like you were saying at the beginning is so critical and most of us are not aware of that but that our unconscious mind is what what drives it, everything it dictates so much in our life and yeah. we often feel kind of helpless and unable to do anything about that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so this is wonderful well thank you again mm -hmm. for being here today We're thank you need to wrap up yeah you have time for maybe one more little to bed if you'd like to leave us with a final thought on yes and again i i really feel passionate about helping practitioners incorporate this into their practices mm -hmm. um and if anybody would like to reach me i can uh, assess them i can get them certified to do neurofeedback okay. uh this is a, a a wellness device the fda has deemed it mm -hmm. so um yeah please contact me Super. i'd love to hear from you all right mm -hmm. so we'll put up your contact info again so people know how to reach you and great thank you again and thank you for our audience for being here and listening to everything that um, Susan shared and thank you to the Westport Library for hosting us and to Verso Studios we appreciate it all right namaste